everyone, welcome back to Teacher FYI. If you're new here, I'm Mackenzie, a fifth grade teacher in Northern California, teaching virtually this entire school year. Google Jamboard really has become one of my favorite apps to use this school year while teaching online. It has worked as such a great collaborative tool with my class to create more meaningful and interactive lessons to really keep them more engaged during those online sessions together. In this video, I'm going to be sharing 10 ways to use Jamboard to create meaningful math lessons for your students. It is geared towards elementary math standards, but you can definitely adjust some of these ideas to work for older students. If you're new here, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. I do have a few more Jamboard videos coming soon, along with additional technology tips and tricks to use in the classroom. If you do enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up so it can reach even more teachers. So math, Jamboard, let's get into it. So before I get started, I do want to say that I recommend that you enable editing access for all of these activities to do with your students so they can actually interact with the Jamboard during your online class. So to do this, you're going to go up where it says share, click and enable anyone with the link to have editing access. Then when I share the link with my students, they can actually work together and collaborate on the Jamboard. The first way to use Jamboard while teaching math is to create your own math manipulatives. Since Jamboard is an interactive whiteboard, it's such a great tool to have your students actually show their thinking when solving word problems or to check for understanding when they are doing adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. As we know, making math more meaningful with the use of math manipulatives can really make such a difference in our students' understanding. And Jamboard has a really easy way to quickly make your own for your students to use in the word problems that they're solving. For example, I have this word problem where my students could draw a picture, use an equation or a model to solve it, and I can make math manipulatives using the shape tool to represent the cookies in this word problem. So to do this, I use the shape tool to create circles, and then I can change the color, and then I just copy and paste however many I want for my students to use while they are solving that problem. My students then can just click and drag and drop the cookies onto the plate for each friend in the problem. If you want to make it even more visual, you can also insert images by going over and clicking the image button. You can then Google search image, upload your own. In this case, since we're using cookies, I'm just going to type in cookie transparent. That way there's no background around it. And now I have inserted the cookie. I can copy and paste however many cookies I want for that problem. And now my students can click and drag the cookies onto the plate. This is a great way for students to be multiplying, dividing, adding, and subtracting, and they can also combine those math manipulatives with using those drawing features when they might be grouping or drawing pictures to solve those problems. The second way to use Jamboard with your students during math is when you're teaching money and actually create your own student banks that your students can use when solving those money word problems or those decimal equations that we know come up in fifth grade. So I know in the classroom, I used to have all of that fake money that my students would use to solve these problems. And I really wanted a way for them to show their work virtually so that I could still check for understanding when they were solving those money problems. You can easily create these student banks on Jamboard by adding in images of each coin onto the Jamboard and then have your students just click and drag and use those monies in a very similar way that they did in the classroom. So to do this, I clicked the image button and then I added an image of each coin and dollar bill that I want in my student's bank. I then make copies of each of the coins and the dollar bill and place them all in a stack. Students can now easily click and drag all the money pieces to solve their problems. I can also make multiple copies of the student bank on the same Jamboard so that each of my students can work by themselves on a different slide while we're all in class together. That way I can actually see their work in live time. So for example, if I said, show me a way to make 63 cents, I can easily see each student working and then they can share out their thinking. We could share different strategies with each other and learn from each other that way. Your students could also have their own copy by sharing the link in Google Classroom. That way they can use it as a tool when working independently. 
willy-nilly. A third way to use Jamboard during math is during your geometry lessons. So as we know in elementary school, a lot of students are learning about their shapes and all their different attributes. And so one activity that I really recommend doing with your students is inserting a graphic organizer and having your students actually do a shape sort on that Jamboard. You could easily insert different shapes using that image button or you can create some of the shapes using that shape tool. In this example, I made this Venn diagram just using the shape tool, or you could insert your own graphic organizer. Now students can click and drag all the different shapes and sort them based on their attributes. This works great as an interactive activity for your students to do during that live session and working in small groups and breakout rooms that they're really discussing with their peers during that time. The fourth way to use Jamboard is to create bar graphs with your class. In elementary, students are expected to be able to use picture graphs and bar graphs to collect data and use that information to solve problems and analyze that data. You can actually create these bar graphs in Jamboard and because Jamboard is so user friendly, students can easily click and drag as you survey the class. So I'm going to show you just a couple bar graph examples, one being a regular bar graph and one being a picture graph. So to do this, I just inserted images from Google Images and then made the little bars for each option with the shape tool. Students can now click and drag their option to answer the question, what is their favorite season? Now we have data about the whole class and we can answer questions and solve problems using that data. This is another example and this time it's a picture graph and I was able to use some clip art that I had made of vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry ice cream and then I just copied the image multiple times, put them all in a stack, and now students just click the ice cream that they want and put it in the bar graph. It's really easy to click and drag these different images that I do think students, especially in around third grade, would be able to create their own picture graphs for the class and survey the class about something that they're interested about. Jamboard makes it really easy to really build this bar graph together as a class during that live instruction and it's engaging for your students because they're really interacting with those visuals. It's a really great way for your class to really collaborate all together and learn a little bit more about each other. Number five is to create number lines. There are a couple ways you could do this using Jamboard. The first is to have your students use sticky notes to add numbers to an open number line. So on the Jamboard, I created this number line using the shape tool to make one long rectangle. And then I added sticky notes with different numbers that I would want my students to click and drag onto the number line. This is very similar to lessons I would do in the classroom with my students, where I would hand out different numbers to my students and we would have to figure out where those numbers belong on a number line in relation to each other. This opens up great conversations to give your students the opportunity to explain how they know where each number goes on a number line. To make those sticky notes, you're just going to go over and click that sticky note feature. Using Jamboard makes it super easy to add more numbers if you want to, or to delete ones off of the number line. The other way to do this would be to insert your own number line onto a Jamboard and use those little counter visuals to actually show you jumping along those number lines. To insert a number line, you can either use that add image button or, drum roll please, Jamboard now has the ability to add background images to the Jamboards. So this is a new feature that just came out about a month ago that many teachers are very excited about because before you couldn't lock images in place on Jamboard as a background. Students were able to click and drag images all over the place and now you can actually insert images as backgrounds and students won't be able to move around those images. So in this example, I created my own number line on a Google slide, one through 20, and then I was able to download it as an image. And now when I go onto Jamboard, I can go up where it says set background and then add that image as the background. Now my students won't be able to click and move that number line around the board. And now I can add those visuals to show the jumping across the number line. I know in primary, we often use little characters hopping across the number line like frogs or kangaroos. So you could also insert an image of one of those characters in the class and use that as a visual to show the hopping across the number line. Again, I really like making copies of each Jamboard template that I create so that my students can also work on it at the same time as me during our live class so that I can actually see their work. Number six is to use a place value chart. 
So Jamboard has so many great features where students can actually draw, they can use those sticky notes, they can use those little math manipulatives that we make for them. This works as a great math tool during math class online because my students are actually able to show their thinking and explain it to the class when solving different problems that involve place value. They're able to line up each of their numbers when we're adding decimals, subtracting, or just comparing numbers. I really wanted to include this because with Jamboard's new update of setting your own background images, it's so easy to insert any templates that you have into Jamboard now, as long as they're images. And so I created this place value chart on Google Slides, I downloaded it as an image and easily set it as a background, and now it's a really easy tool that my students can use during class and I can see their work when we're working together. The seventh way to use Jamboard during math is to use it as graph paper. So in Jamboard, you do have the option to change the background to graph paper. However, it is pretty small, so it might be kind of hard for your students to see it. I recommend inserting an image of larger graph paper as a background, and then it's locked in place for your students to use. With that graph paper, I really like using Jamboard's shape tool to insert different shapes where my students can actually find the area of rectangles or use the rectangles to show area models when learning multiplication. It's really easy to add new rectangles that I want my students to solve in class, or I can make multiple copies and my students can make their own area models and solve the area of different rectangles. They can also use those drawing features to actually show their work or the sticky notes to add the equation that they're solving. Or if your students are actually practicing graphing, then you could insert those coordinate planes and then your students can actually use those drawing tools to plot different points onto the graph. This is a really quick and easy way for your students to have access to graph paper virtually. The eighth way to use Jamboard for math is to use it to create your own number frames for your students to use. Jamboard makes it easy to also customize those number frames to add a little touch of fun for your students. There are a couple of ways to make those number frames. The first would be to make it entirely on Jamboard, where I use the shape tool to make the squares to represent the table. So if I was making a 10 frame, then I would use the shape tool and insert squares to create those 10 frames. The problem with that is that it does take a little bit more time and students would actually be able to click and drag those 10 frame pieces away. And so what I do recommend is creating your own table on Google side and then just inserting that as a background image. This is an example of how I use Google Slides to first make a template and then insert it as a background. On Slides, I clicked Insert Table. I then changed the color and the width of the lines. And I want two on this template. So I'm just going to copy the table and paste it right below the first one. Now go to File, Download as an Image, and then I will go back to Jamboard and insert the background with that image. So now it is locked in place. Now that I have my number frames on that Jamboard, I can use Jamboard to create those little counters. Just like I showed earlier in the video, I can use the shape tool to make different shapes and put those into those number frames. I can also create a pile of those little counters for my students to click and drag into the 10 frames. To add a little bit of fun, you can also insert images for your students to put into those 10 frames when solving problems like emojis or animals, and then use those as little counters for your students to click and drag while they solve those problems. Number nine is a fun activity to get your students thinking right away as they enter math class. So for this, I just used Jamboard shape tools to create a circle map and then put a number in the middle of the circle map. And then I had my students add sticky notes to find different ways to create that number. This works as a great warm up activity. You could post it as they are entering that Zoom call to get them thinking right away. And it involves all of the students to collaborate on that same Jamboard. And it encourages every student to participate during class. So if only three students share out to the class, then you know that everyone still had a chance to participate by sharing on that sticky note. The 10th and final way I'm sharing today about how to use Jamboard with your students during math is to use it for number talks. So I know that during Zoom, we are now almost halfway through the year and often there can be 
crickets in my class online. It can be really hard to get every student to participate out loud, having the same students always raising their hands. So I really like to remind my students that there is more than one way to participate. They can share out, they can share in the chat box. And what I really love about Jamboard is that it really does work as a great discussion tool. I want to make sure that I'm giving my students opportunities to talk about math, practice using that academic language, that discourse that we need our students to use to communicate with each other and to have those meaningful and productive conversations. So this is an example of one way that I could start a number talk with my students. I have the sentence frames for them so that they know how to respond to each other during class. And I start with just one problem. So in this case, my students are comparing decimals. I don't have them share out what they think the answer is yet. I just give them thinking time. And then I slowly have my students start sharing out. I start with just one student and then the rest of the class adds on sticky notes why they agree or disagree and why or why not and they really work on building on each other's responses even if they don't get the opportunity to share out loud with the class they still need to add a sticky note to the Jamboard to share out their thinking of what they think the answer is and why another way you could encourage number talks is to have your students in breakout rooms where you hop in the breakout rooms to hear their conversations about different problems number talks do take modeling and practice but even during zoom they are possible to have I really recommend having those sentence frames on the Jamboard to really guide those discussions and model how to use that academic language with your students. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you found this video helpful. Google Jamboard is really such a great tool to make math more meaningful and interactive for your students online this year. I will link the Jamboard that has all the examples that I shared with you today down in the description box if you do want to go back and refer to those examples later on. If you are new to Jamboard, I do have a video tutorial and another video sharing six additional ways that you can use Jamboard in the classroom, so I'll be sure to link those down below. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, and I will catch you next time. Bye everyone!